Hi, I'm Lars from All About Samsung, back for a new video and today we're gonna have a first hands-on with the brand new Samsung Galaxy S10 Lite. You got that right, S10 Lite, a fourth member of the S10 family. And what is it about? Well, if you remember back in the days there was a Samsung Galaxy S3 Mini and a Galaxy S4 Mini, kind of a stripped down version of the flagship. In the meantime, there was no such thing. Basically, the A-series took over this function as a stripped-down version of the flagship. Now Samsung apparently has decided other and now it has released a stripped-down version of the Samsung Galaxy S10 series, the Samsung Galaxy S10 Lite. And what it's all about? Well, let's see in the first hands-on. Let's go. The first thing you're probably going to notice about the Samsung Galaxy S10 Lite is the design. The Samsung Galaxy S10 Lite is the first Lite model in years. The last ones were the Samsung Galaxy S3 Mini and the S4 Mini. Now the design fits to a flagship, but one quickly gets the impression that it rather fits to a yet-to-come flagship. The huge camera on the back reminds strongly of the design which is expected for the Samsung Galaxy S20, which is still up to come. But one after the other. On the front, there is a 6.7 inch S AMOLED display, clearly showing that light is not the same as Mini found on the S4 or S3 Mini. While the Samsung Galaxy S10e is still a small device in the portfolio, which should soon disappear from the market, the S10 Lite is about the same size as the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus. The display itself is sufficiently sharp with 2400 by 1080 pixels. A higher resolution only offers an added value for very few users in everyday life, so this is totally fine. The display also offers the usual color representation and viewing angle for S AMOLED. A special feature is the Infinity O display. A recess that is now in the middle and is also already in the direction of the Galaxy S20. Whereas the S10 series previously used a hole in the upper right corner of the display to hide the front camera, the S10 Lite moves the camera and the hole to the middle. This is already known from the Galaxy Note 10 and is also expected for the Samsung Galaxy S20. And there is also a fingerprint sensor placed in the display, a difference to the Samsung Galaxy S10e where the scanner is set in the frame. The scanner is just a conventional optical scanner and not an ultrasonics one. As with the Samsung Galaxy S10e, the display is not large rounded in an edge. A minimal rounding in the glass, that was it. The frame doesn't offer any special features and no unnecessary Bixby button. But unfortunately also no 3.5mm jack connector on the bottom. A longer press on the power button will bring Bixby if you want to have it. On the back you then come to one of the Samsung Galaxy S10 Lite's most important highlights, the huge camera module. More about that in a minute. First of all, the rest of the back. Samsung is talking about a metal glass design and obviously hopes that you focus on the camera in such a way that no marketing bullshit is named as such. Metal glass is nothing here, it's just plastic. It's high quality and if you don't know it, you probably won't notice it. In addition, plastic doesn't break as fast as glass in fall, but metal glass, no, this is bullshit. All in all, a nice device, which should give you a very good idea of what the Samsung Galaxy S20 will look like. The Galaxy S10 Lite comes in three colors, black, white and blue, although a marked large for the blue version in Germany is not yet certain. Now to the hardware of the S10 Lite. Till now, Lite actually stood for a slimmed down or stripped down version of the flagship. However, the flagship, the Samsung Galaxy S10, has now been on the market for almost 10 months and Samsung has apparently not met any cuts in hardware. A Snapdragon 855 beats under the hood. That's quite a remarkable choice. While well, Samsung has so far used the Exynos 9820 Octa and the Galaxy S10 in Europe, the Snapdragon 855 is used in the S10 Lite. The Exynos 9820 is probably one of the reasons why Samsung had to accept massive criticism for the battery life of the S10 series. The S10 Lite now gets the Snapdragon 855, which was given to the USA for the other S10 devices previously. 
the SOC is powered by a huge 4500 milliamp battery, which also handles ultra fast charging with 45 watts. With a low but sufficient uh, resolution and a more efficient SOC, the Galaxy S10 Lite's battery life should turn out significantly better than that of the previous S10 devices. In addition, there are 8GB of RAM and 128GB of internal memory, which can be expanded via microSD card. In short, wishes are not left open here. If Samsung had released the S10 Lite in early 2019, it would have been a strong flagship. Now to the software. There are no special features here. Android 10 with the new One UI 2.0, a gastric control that works well and can be used like the one found on the Galaxy S10 with the appropriate update. Now to the camera, a clear highlight of the Samsung Galaxy S10 Lite. So how do you justify a device that, apart from the stronger battery and a more efficient SoC, offers no difference to the previously available S10 devices? Samsung inflates the camera. As a sensor, Samsung uses a 48 megapixel sensor, which offers 0.8 micrometer small pixels, but adds 4 pixels to a larger one, so it's just combining by pixel binning them, and thus offers a good picture quality even in low light conditions. At least that was my first impression. Switching between the summed up pixel bin resolution and the full 48 megapixels is not intuitive though. You have to click on the aspect ratio to get an option for the same aspect ratio but full resolution. However, the real innovation is not the sensor. It is a special suspension for the lens. Samsung calls this Tilt OES. This allows the camera movements of plus minus 1 to 3% to be compensated. With photos, this shouldn't make much of a difference, but especially with videos, Samsung calls it a super steady camera. Compared to the currently widespread digital stabilization, this has the advantage that no video has been cropped and offset, but instead the lens is moved and the recording itself is stabilized. The result is impressive, videos are recorded with UHD resolution, but appear very stable and not jerky, but clearer than it's on digital stabilized videos. In addition, the camera has a macro mode, which, with a focal length of 40mm, allows you to take pictures from a very short distance to allow very detailed macros. There is no telezoom, but the loss should be bearable. For the third camera, Samsung is using an ultra-wide angle lens, so this is quite a powerful combination found on the Samsung Galaxy S10 Lite, and to me, quite a good highlight. So this was the first hands-on of the brand new Samsung Galaxy S10 Lite, the fourth member of the S10 family, and there are a couple of things to notice. First of all, it's a good device. The combination of the Snapdragon 855 with the 4500mAh battery sounds really promising, and I really do like the design of the S20. But there's a huge question mark, why? I mean, in one or two months you're gonna see the Galaxy S20, the next generation for 2020. And now you do have a very powerful Galaxy S10 Lite, which is even better uh, than the Galaxy S10 Plus in terms of battery life, maybe even in terms of the SoC. You do have a new camera feature and the design of the Galaxy S20. So it comes to your mind that Samsung maybe should have waited just another one or two months and then called the S10 Lite maybe the S20 Lite. Anyway, it's a really decent device. I hope you like the first hands-on. If you have any questions regarding the device, just let me know below in the comments. Feel free to comment down there and give us a thumbs up and follow this channel. I'm Lars from All About Samsung. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.